At Casista, we reimagine, redefine, and ultimately reinvent how consumers interact with businesses. I'm sure all of you in this audience are familiar with Apple Siri, Google Now, Microsoft Cortana, the products, the game-changing products, really, that are designed to simplify uh, how consumers access uh, services on their mobile devices. At Cosisto, we use state-of-the-art artificial intelligence technology uh, that helps uh, enterprises in financial ser services vertical first to level the playing field. A uh, little bit about the company. Cosisto is the latest spin-off from Stanford Research Institute, or SRI. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with SRI, they're one of the largest independent R&D organizations in the world with decades of experience in artificial intelligence technology. They're also known for their uh, strong venture licensing program. Uh, Nuance Communications, one of the largest, well, not one of the largest, the largest speech recognition company in the world came out from SRI. And so was Siri. Siri was created at SRI before it was sold uh, to Apple. So what Casisto is taking to market is a next generation virtual personal assistant technology that was created at SRI. We are based here in New York in Menlo Park. We are funded and we're growing uh, rapidly. We have have a lot of chaos. So if anybody's interested in, in bringing order at chaos <laughs> with engineering talents, we are very, very interested to speak to you. Um, Again, the problem we're trying to fix is very, very simple. We believe that enterprise mobile applications remain underutilized. Uh, I think the conventional graphic, and I'm sure many of you are mobile developers here, and you can build awesome apps, and I know you built 53 of them, uh, but I can guarantee you that uh, conventional graphical user interface has some serious limitations, and that's why Siri was invented. This is why um, uh, Google uh, uses now. We believe the answer to that, those limitations is conversational user interface. <coughs> Uh, let me show you an example uh, uh, in banking. Uh, uh, anything you can do in banking today in the United States, you can do online. 100 plus features are supported by uh, major banks and credit unions. Uh, situation mobile is very different. Only small subset of capabilities is supported in mobile uh, devices. So when we started working in this uh, space, we went and talked to banks. And what we've learned is that to create user experience that is rich in features on the, on the one hand, on the other hand, that makes those features easy to discover, navigate to, and use is very challenging to create and very expensive. And again, we believe that fresh thinking, new paradigm is needed to solve these uh, uh, problems. Conversational AI or conversational user experience helps close the gap between online and mobile experience. Uh, there are three things that are important. Uh, using conversational user interface, and when I say conversational, that does not mean a voice. Uh, as you will see in our demo shortly, we'll, we are able to support text interactions as well as, well as touch interface. Is there to simplify uh, uh, user experience? More importantly, through conversational UI, you can let consumers start their journey and their communication uh, with the enterprises in their own way. And enterprises can expose unlimited set of capabilities. All you need to uh, do is to ask or type your uh, request. And last but not least, that I, that I said, we are. This is not a voice play. We're really focused on human-like interaction <laughs> experience. It can be created with voice, but can also be created with text interfaces as well. Let me show you a demo. Any questions while I'm doing the demo? Nope. All right. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is a, your typical banking app, and the uh, first vertical that we're focused on is, is, is financial services, because we're in New York. Um, and Casisto is embedded microphone floating on your screen, so you can simply tap on Casisto and Casisto overlay uh, comes up. Now, this is something we call a dashboard. Dashboard is active. You can simply tap on the items in the dashboard, and uh, uh, we're able to respond. So one way to interact with Casisto is through a uh, tap interface. Uh, let me show you uh, an example of uh, voice interaction. I'm looking for a $3 transaction in my checking account. I didn't find an exact match, but I did find 10 transactions that are close to what you're looking for. 
So it's really not, I mean, try to do that in your banking app and it will take a long time if you're lucky to find that transaction. But it's not only about the time, it's how people feel about it. You just ask your bank for something or you, you again, I could have typed that request and the uh, as, answer comes back uh, uh, instantaneously. Now, you see from this screen that I'm not very careful with my fees. So I can simply look at it, but be terrified and do nothing or I can come back and say, how much have I spent on fees? So we are using Google Card now like Paradigm. You see the scrollable conversational cards. They're interactive. Uh, they're really, really easy to use. Now what makes Casisto conversational? Let me show you an example. What about Starbucks? <coughs> <coughs> now, <laughs> now this question standalone does not really make any make any sense, right? If I spoke to John and I said, John, what about Starbucks? He look at me and say, Well, what about Starbucks? But what I said before is, how much have I spent on fees? So this is a system that uh, creates contextual conversational experience. What's magical about it? Well, what's magical about it is one one thing: you don't have to write a single line of code to make that happen. You know, those experiences with today's technology can be created. Created. However, you need to write tons of code. With Casisto, it happens, and in the runtime, the system knows how to create this conversational experience. Let me do something more traditional in banking so I can come back and say, uh, I'd like to make a payment on my credit card for my checking account. The minimum payment amount due on your credit card account is $159. This the amount you want to transfer. The Casisto knows that I'm paying my credit card. It knows about minimum payment on my credit card. It goes and figures out what's the best recommendation for me to manage my finances. Well, I can stop here and pay my uh, credit card. And by the way, this is another widget where I can simply tap or type my answers. Or I can look at this screen and say, um, how much do I owe my credit card? <laughs> Again, what happens, it's a, it's, a, it's a concept of stackable user goals, right? It, uh, the system remembers about my previous interactions. It answers my question, takes me back to my transfer. So let me just pay it. Pay $2,000 now. I'm sorry, you have only $1,000 left. You so this is really quick assisted demo. We're after simplifying user experience. We're uh, after uh, uh, enriching user experience and letting users uh, find out a way, the best way for them to interact with banks. So let me go back. How much time do I have? 14 minutes? <laughs> okay, well, I'm almost done. Now, what makes uh, Casisto different? Now, uh, we have the same parents from SRI, Siri, uh, and, but you can think of us as uh, Siri's younger sibling with MBA. Right? What makes Casisto <laughs> what makes Casisto different is uh, the depth. It's a deep learning, deep knowledge system. Siri knows a lot of things uh, 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 and it's very shallow. It's very broad but very shallow. What Casisto is after, we're going at uh, specific domains, specific verticals with very deep ontology and we know a lot about verticals that we're targeting. So the knowledge and the roots that we build is, is the key difference and that's, that's the knowledge that enables this conversational experience. Now to make that magic happen, we actually license the most amazing set of technologies from SRI. Uh, we are only a few companies in the world that has, uh, we have our own uh, voice uh, biometrics technology, we have our own speech recognition technology that supports multiple languages. We have natural language understanding, reasoning components, natural language generation. We basically have entire stack that is required to build today's modern conversational system. And that stack was not created in 20th century. That stack was built in 2010 to, for mobile devices and beyond. 
So in summary, Casisto really we are really about uh, closing uh, uh, the gap between mobile and online channels. But this is just the beginning of our journey. Uh, we believe that when um, uh, embeddable and wearable devices will go mainstream, an Internet of Things will start happening. Conversational user experience will go mainstream, and that's what Casisto is all about. We're looking to create human-like interfaces, human-like interaction experiences on any devices that consumers will use. Thank you. We have time for questions? Yeah? yeah. Is, this, is it self learning? Uh, it has uh, huge components of it that are self learning. It has components that system that needs to be trained on. So it's a combination. You need to build an ontology. You can continue to build the ontology, add natural language components, and it get, gets better and better and better. That's all right. That's a hard question. You were working at IBM, right? <laughs> Make it easy now. No. Okay. Very, very, very compelling. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how it, how much training it requires? So let's say you're doing this for a bank. Let's say I want to take it to my insurance company. How do we train it on the depth of what can happen in my insurance company? What the different conversational flows are going to be? How much work is that going to be for us? Right. So I will answer it at a high level, and then we can go deeper in that. I think it's one of the secret sources of Casisto is that we figured out how to quote unquote bootstrap the systems and teach them on how to you know uh, learn about new vertical. And we have that process down to, and it, it is very very efficient. I'll be happy to get into details uh, uh, of that. But uh, specifically, if we were to go to another vertical, which is absolutely part of a strategy, we're in financial services today, very broadly in retail banking and credit card. Parts, uh, wealth management, commercial banking, but we're definitely looking to other verticals and we think that 60 to 90 days is, a, is an effort that is required for us to bootstrap a new vertical. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, nice presentation. So, you already said, at the end, said HTML5. That means you're building the code injection or using WebKit. You're not right. So, what we're, this is, the good, this is a good point. So, what we're doing, uh, we have, a, a, we give a plugin to our customers, and that plugin includes a combination of a hybrid, it's a, it's a hybrid plugin that includes native code that is required to do, let's say, speech compression or uh, access to GPS you know, uh, capabilities. However, the presentation that we're doing, the rendering, uh, default rendering that we do, is HTML5. It runs across iOS or Android. Okay. Now we have a lower level API and banks that are, you know, they have a lot of development resources and like to dig in and build native experiences, they can use that too. But with HTML5, especially your, with your demo, you transact with sensitive data, a malicious user with enough uh, resources can basically penetrate it through the web kit. Well, that's, that's a very good point. The question is about the security and penetration, and the answer is no, they cannot. Because we work with banks, and not only we are transacting in HTML, we are, this is a cloud-based system, but we're working with banks and regulators around the world to build the most protected system that, uh, that you can imagine, both from uh, data uh, transmission and data storage perspective and elimination of personal identity by identifiable information. So we built a very, very secure platform that protects sensitive information at various points of, of uh, transmission and storage of the data. I was yep. going to ask you about like ambiguous like words and terms. Like you said credit card. So which credit card? How do you, how do you handle that? Right, so the question is about how do we handle ambig ambiguity. A lot of it is about uh, training. There, there are things that we you know, may not be able to, to understand. However, we, we you know, specifically in financial services vertical, we probably built the corpus and the knowledge that is richer than anybody else has, and we continue to enhance it and improve it. So instead of credit card, you can say CC, you can say a variety of synonyms. Now, what's the, the other aspect of your... Different accounts. Different right, so if the system knows about multiple accounts. So if you, let's say, if I, if I come back and say, what's my balance? It'll come back and say, well, you know, which account you're asking about. If I say checking, it says, I see you have two checking accounts. So it has all that knowledge, and that's part of the depth. Yep. Uh, do you also have user recognition? If, for example, someone borrows my phone, my kid is borrowing my phone, or anything like that? Uh, so this is uh, user uh, you know, verification and biometrics technology. As I said, we licensed that technology from SRI. We have not deployed it yet. Uh, we're a startup. We're trying to focus on uh, going from chaos to order and you know, so trying to simplify our life. <laughs> yep. 
guys already have any users? Yes, we are working with a number of banks, uh, both in the United States and internationally as well. So we are, we have users, we have uh, 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 revenue, we are well funded, and I don't know if I mentioned we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Yep. Do you have any uh, patents of your own? We, we, we licensed, that's a great question about patents, we licensed very rich portfolio of patents from SRI and we created our own patents uh, as well. Uh, the, the one question that often gets asked is, well, you know, Siri IP, there is no Siri IP in this. There was a clean room effort that was created after Siri, but we have very rich uh, portfolio of patents that, uh, that we licensed from SRI along with the software. Thank you. Okay. Who are you selling to in the organization? Right. Great, great question. Uh, who are we selling to the organization? Uh, we're selling to uh, somebody who owns digital channels or and mobile product groups. So that's the target audience that we, we focused on. As I said, in retail banking, commercial banking, wealth management, uh, people who own digital channel experience, that's our, uh, our, our, their are our primary targets. And, and you found them difficult to get an audience with, or they, you have people within your business that, that have experience there? Or uh, look, I think there are multiple ways to look at it, and I'm going to answer your question two ways. Uh, it's, it's enterprise selling. It's not, never easy to get meetings, and so we, I think we're all in this room know uh, how it works. With that said, we were able to build very strong pipeline as a company. We are a very young company. Uh, we don't have sales resources except for, you know, uh, for myself, and the pipeline that we built was from, uh, through the word of mouth. And what also helped us is Casisto is, uh, uh, was a winner of 2014 FinTech Innovation Labs uh, uh, program here in New York City. And if any of you are in FinTech space or targeting FinTech space, you should definitely consider that because it was an amazing program that opened a lot of uh, doors for us. So we also, we were finalists at the uh, South by Southwest uh, and that, that, that helps as well. Time for one more. Time for one more question. Yes, please. Um, I know you're selling into banks and the digital channels. Is it largely on the consumer side of banking, or is this application being used on the... We started on consumer side on, on uh, in retail banking and credit cards, and so we sort of gradually moved up the chain. We did uh, implementations in, in commercial banking, uh, sort of virtual per virtual personal specialists for CFOs and treasurers. So we, you know, we're doing both. Uh, the bulk of our implementations are on on retail side today. Okay. Thank you.